Good morning and good evening. Welcome back to For the Lonely Nights. I'm Paul Kim and thank you for joining us on this very special episode uh, of this podcast series cuz um for the first time ever uh we actually have we're going to be featuring a guest in this episode. Um and so like I said last week's podcast, um I've been trying to work this out. I'm trying to figure out the details, but honestly, uh, I'm going to just uh, see how it goes. Um you know, uh, let the guests just kind of take free reign and yeah you know um and we'll figure things out along the way so anyways um yeah before we get started let's introduce our guest here um first ever guest on this uh legendary podcast series um it's actually gonna be my sister <laughs> <laughs> um introduce yourself hello i'm shimu's sister my name Paul is Kim. <laughs> I met Paul Kim's sister. My name is Faith. My Korean name is Shin Won. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. Honestly, like, I you could already tell. Um, since I'm doing this with my sister, it's gonna be very casual. Uh, it's gonna be very fun, lighthearted, I think. But yeah. Um, so let's just get started. You know. Um, you know, I I was kind of just thinking about what I should kind of. What kind of questions I, su- I should ask uh, the guests that kind of come on to uh, this podcast and what kind of things we should talk about. And honestly, I think it definitely changes with, um, you know, whoever it is. Um, but yeah, you know, my sister, uh, just give a little quick background. I'll let her explain more. But she did recently graduate uh, a year ago, a year or two ago. And so, <laughs> yeah, she gra- um, and then she currently is pursuing a career in okay, uh, teaching. Yes, okay, so she said she's going to do the explanation, but yeah, um, give a little introduction about what you do. Hello. So, I went to college in Boston. I went to BU and I graduated last year with a bachelor's in elementary and special ed. And then after that, I got a job working as a elementary school teacher in Boston, so that's what I'm doing now currently. Okay, um, so yeah, um, so she currently does live in Boston. She actually has to go back uh, for this next uh, upcoming school year in tomorrow, right, actually? But um, yeah, um, that's actually kind of related to the first thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and I was just kind of hoping that you would kind of go a little more in-depth um, about, you know, your career, your choice, uh, what made you lead that choice, and also, you know... Um, just the finer things that uh, usually, you know, uh, most people won't, uh, you know, know about before they kind of step into that field. Um, so, you know, just the, the little insider um, tips and tricks or advices that you would give to anyone who's kind of interested in that area. But yeah, you know, take it away, honestly. I mean, I've only been teaching in my own classroom for a year, so I don't know if I'll have a lot of tips and advices, but I guess I'll start with first how I kind of chose this path. When I was a senior in high school and I was, you know, applying for all of these colleges, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Um, And quite frankly, I didn't really even think college was necessary or that I even wanted to go to college. Um, But when I was looking through all the uh, majors that the colleges offered on, um, common app i think it was called yeah yeah (laughs) um the major education was the only one that kind of stuck out to me so i was like oh what the heck like let's just go for it so i applied as an education major and when i got to bu um one thing i really liked about the bu's education program was that they put us into classrooms right away um as a freshman from the first semester So I got to go into elementary uh, classrooms and really see what was going on there. And um, I really liked what I saw and um, I could see myself, you know, being a teacher of the classroom and doing what um, I saw the other teachers doing. So 
I stuck with it. And yeah. Yeah, now you're here. You know, you're set. You have a you have a job um, right out of college. I think that's very rare, isn't it, for a lot of teachers? Um, from what I have noticed from, you know, my friends who graduated with me or um, some of my friends who graduated a couple years before me, um, yes, it's, I think it's very hard getting a job as um, a teacher because we only have, like, a certain opening period each year because we have to basically get hired before the school year starts and if you don't have a job lined up before august or at the latest like september um then you pretty much have to wait until the next summer to you know go through the application process again so yes i would say especially for education majors it can seem very hard to get a job right out of college so what, what kind of, uh, I guess, steps did you take, you know, for you to be getting this? Or was it kind of, you know, a luck or, or lottery? What kind of? Um, I mean, looking back now, so a lot of things, like a lot of preparations and um, things happened last summer, when, the summer right after I graduated. But looking back now, I can definitely say, like, it wasn't me at all. It was all God. Um, so what I personally did was right after I graduated from college that May, I spent the next two months taking um, the licensure tests. And I know it's a little different for, uh, from state to state, but for Massachusetts, you have to take five state tests and you have to pass all of them in order to get licensed as a teacher in Massachusetts. Um, and because I wanted a job right away for the uh, next school year, I needed to pass all five tests on the first go. Mm -hmm. um, so for the first like month or two, I um, studied for the t those tests and um, thanks to God, I passed all of them on the first try. Um, and after I passed all of them, then I started, um, you know, putting myself out there, filling out applications, um, reaching out to friends who already went through this. And um, I was very blessed to have a, a teacher that I student taught with who really connected me to people and principals. So um, the school that I am currently working at right now, um, the teacher that I student taught for, um, she has few friends working at, the, at my school. So she kind of connected me that way too. Mm. yeah <laughs> Dang. um and you know i i know this kind of first part it's a lot it's you know very a kind of interview uh based um but you know as we kind of go on to the later discussion topics you know uh, hopefully it'll be more like a discussion back and forth but um you know just kind of laying down the foundation of uh who this person is uh and, you know i just have like one more question that i was kind of curious about um going back to kind of landing um or starting your career right out of college um i know for a lot of people or a lot of teachers you know teaching is kind of like uh something they they do you know uh, after they retire or something from their other job or mm -hmm. or maybe a lot of people think oh like i'm gonna pursue you know so and so job or in so and so field and then oh maybe once i do that for a, you know a decade or two um, when I'm kind of get older, then I'm going to teach, you know, because that's just kind of like the last, I don't want to say last resort, it's just like, you know, something to do um, once you've done everything else. And so kind of what are your, what's your thoughts on those things? And, you know, um, so far, what was your experiences, you know, on, on people, your students kind of reacting to, uh, you know, you going straight into this, you know, while others, you know, it's kind of a last, a last step thing kind of thing. Yeah, I think... Um my personal experience with this, I guess, thought that a lot of people have, especially in this country, um, started in college. I know um, from my personal experience and then also talking to some of my other friends who are or were education majors, um, a lot of people, um, college students, and some who are my friends, um, 
they would say, oh yeah, right now I'm, you know, majoring in engineering or I am pre-med, but like if this doesn't work out, then I might just become a science teacher or, you know, some sort of an education um, field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, that actually, personally, I get really pissed off when people say things like that because, I mean, I think you need passion for any career that you have, but I think for teaching, um, I get you really need to have a special kind of passion and heart because like what you're doing isn't just, you know, teaching a concept or filling out paperwork or talking to people for hours a day. It's you're really shaping these kids minds and lives. So if you are not going into this field thinking, oh, I really want to become a teacher to um, really love on these kids, then I don't think it's a profession for you. Because even for me, like I really love my job and I love the uh, kids and um, pretty much all the aspects of my job. Um, there are days when I'm just really like bogged down with all the work that I have to do because again, like teaching isn't just talking to kids for eight hours a day. Like there's a lot of prepping you have to do. Even um, when I go home, like I have to bring um, like stacks of paper with me to grade and then I have to prepare for the following day. So I'm basically working like more than 12 hours a day. Um, and I know like even as a person who went into this with passion like there are hard days so like if you're going into teaching because your first career didn't work out or because you think that this seems easy then i'm sorry but <laughs> look for something else <laughs> no yeah and i think that's funny because like um i don't know maybe i'm making making out bigger than i than it is um maybe in like the actual teaching world but like especially um because you are teaching uh primary education you know um you know kindergarten elementary uh you know the younger kids um i know there's like a lot of stigma going around like oh teachers of a primary education rather than secondary education or college you know um it takes you know a lot less to become a, to teach younger kids because you know you know you're not here teaching them like you know advanced calculus or anything like that you're teaching them you know um just the, the fundamentals and, and everything like that. And so, you know, there's definitely a stigma around that, but or I think, you know, I think it there is, you know, is it? You think uh, it's you think it's pretty big and Um, yes. And going back to when I was in college, um, I would have these debates with my friends. Um and most of my friends in college were either business majors or engineers or engineer majors. Um so obviously the classes that they have to take, especially engineering students concept wise it's much harder than the classes I had to take so we would get into these like debates or I guess arguments um, because sometimes they would piss me off and say that <laughs> you know education majors have it easy or you know like it's easy for education majors to get 4.0s or you know like all of these things um, and while of course like concept wise as I said um, it's much different like what we learn to teach versus what engineering students or other students might have to learn. But I think the skill sets that you need to become especially a primary te uh, school teacher versus any other career um, that requires you to work with a group of adults um, are very different. And that's the important part. Yeah, because also I think about it too. and. Um yeah maybe like content wise like you said you know it might be um definitely a, a, a lot i guess simpler um you know when you're working with younger kids but at the same time i feel like rather than because once you get to the secondary education level high school middle school even um like all, these kids are basically they're grown up you know they know how um that's when they start forming their own study habits you know they know how to study they know how to do their homework they know how to listen to lecture but you know younger kids they haven't really developed that yet, you know? And so um, I would say like 
college professors, secondary education teachers. Um, yeah, they got to do prep and all that. But at the end of the day, you know, they, they talk, they teach what they need to teach. They say everything. And then, you know, it's kind of on the students to take that in. But I feel like primary education teachers, not only you got to know how to teach. Um, and yes, like I said, the content may be simpler, but I feel like your job is just more than that. Not, I wouldn't say babysit, but you got to, uh, like you say, be uh, more understanding about how, um, I guess, your students' minds work. You know, you got to teach them not only the content, but how to study, how to do your homework, teach them how to grow up, you know, as kids. And you got to be patient with them. And you got to, you know, not act as a teacher only, but you got to act as a role model. You know, you got to act like someone to look forward to. Um, you know, that's just my thoughts on it. So, I mean, like, you know, you think I'm pretty accurate on that? or, or I mean... Some? Yeah, I agree with you that um, even amongst teachers, depending on what you teach and, you know, what grade you teach and where you teach, like, you definitely um, have to have different skill sets. And I wouldn't necessarily say, like, being a primary school teacher is easier or harder than being a high school teacher or a college professor. But um, as you said, um, being a primary school teacher, we need to teach all uh, these kids not just the fun like the concepts but the fundamentals of you know what a school is how to learn in a school setting um and not just in school settings but also teach them you know social things mm -hmm. um and all of these things so yeah again just going back like we def we need a different set of skills mm -hmm. awesome yeah so i mean you know i think kind of wrap up this topic of um, you know, education and all that uh, like I mentioned before you know any, anything you want to uh, any tips or tricks any advices or anything you want to just say to anyone who who might be interested because uh, I definitely know a lot of people who are um, kind of interested in becoming teachers they just don't know what it if they got what it takes so um I would say the first tip that comes to mind the thing that really helped me to realize like oh i really want to do this um, as my career is um, really being in the classrooms um, if you're if you're already in college and your school doesn't really offer you to be in classrooms then i would advise you to volunteer or um, i guess teach either summer school or programs that will let you kind of see what it takes to be a teacher um, and what kind of goes on, uh, goes in in the classroom because um, I know, as I said, BU let us go into classrooms starting from our first semester of our first year. And um, I had friends who went into these classrooms with me as, um, as freshmen, but then they quickly realized, oh, this isn't the path for me. And I had a lot of people um, switch majors. So um, that's the first tip. I can give um, and I think the second tip isn't necessarily just for people who want to become educators but just any college students or people who are looking for jobs or are going to be job hunting soon um, for me but from the time that I graduated um, until the time I landed my first job, it took about three months. And I know in this day and age, like three months, it definitely doesn't seem like a lot of time and it isn't. Like I was very lucky to land a job um, within those three months. But um, I think the most important thing is that you have to pray and don't be stressed out. And I know like I can tell you that now really easily because I already went through that life stage, but um, I think for me, the re um, last summer when, before I landed my first job, I wasn't super stressed. I know a lot of my friends and family members were like, you need to apply for more jobs, like you need to put yourself more out there. But for me, like I knew that I was there for a reason, like I knew that if God wanted me to stay in Boston and teach there, like he was going to make me stay even if I didn't want to. Um, so just really trusting that God has 
the best plans for you and yeah, just leave it all to him. Amen, amen. And yeah, you know, she says she already went through that, but she might go through it again. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a crazy world out here. All right, anyways, um, yeah, let's go into our uh, second topic of discussion here. Um, and, you know, hopefully this one could be a more, uh, it's kind of casual and uh, it's talking to each other right here. But um, honestly, I, I, I asked you, you know, what kind of stuff you want to talk about um, on this podcast. And, you know, as always, you didn't give me anything to work <laughs> with. So um, I was kind of thinking and, you know, actually this past week, I, um, I came across this this short video, um, I forgot the artist's name, uh, but he just put out a little like snippet of his new song that he was working on. It was about Peter Pan and, and growing up, um, and and things like that. And honestly, like it's a good song, so I listened to it a, lot, a couple times. But um, it just kind of got me on the topic of thinking. Plus, you know, like you we're, like you just talked about, you're a teacher and everything with kids and working with younger kids and everything. So let's talk about growing up. You know, <laughs> and what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> you know, let me tell you. Let me tell you what that means. Um, so I was just kind of thinking, like, well, at least for me personally, like, I feel like whenever you're 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 young or you're you're you know your kids, um, all you want to do is grow up. You know, because you always look up. That's where you, that's all you, you know, that's the only direction to look. Everyone's older than you. Everyone, you know, already driving, um, has jobs as kids whatever it is and you know even as kids you know you kind of look up to the next you always look up to the next step if you're in first grade you look up to second grade once you're in second grade third grade middle school high school college and then you know uh 21 you know you graduate and that's that you know but i feel like once you get to a certain point you know you kind of stop looking up and you start uh looking back you know and you kind of wish like dang like when did where did time go you know like i'm already you know, 20, I'm already 23. Um, how old are you? 35? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, no. 23. 23, but yeah. Um, yeah, and then you're like, dang, like, I wish, like, I, w- I could stop growing up, or I wish I was back, you know, I wish I could go back to being a kid. Um, and I don't know, is that, is that just something that resonates with me, or have you ever had those thoughts kind of growing? I mean, I think most people, I think they go through a similar thought process, um, like the one that you just mentioned but for me personally i think when i was in elementary school i did want to grow up i'm like oh like i can't wait until i'm in middle school high school um like i can't wait until i'm going to be 18 or you know an adult but i think from middle school i always kind of had that mindset oh my gosh i'm already 13 um oh my gosh i'm already in high school like i oh my gosh i I'm 16, I got my license, I'm 18, like, I think, um, for the last, like, eight-ish years, I've kind of lived with that mindset, so, Mm -hmm. for me, I mean, I don't regret much in my life, because I kind of live, like, free flow style, (laughs) but, (laughs) but I would say, like, one thing that I do regret, um, looking back is, I wish I lived more, I guess, free, um, like, I wish I was, I lived more like a kid, like a normal kid, Mm -hmm. instead of having those, um, thoughts kind of bear down on me, because, I mean, I'm 23 now, and I, I'm still young, but, you know, the 14-year-old me, who was a freshman in high school, I was just a kid like I didn't have to think that I was you know too old to do this or that I had to grow up fast Mm. if that makes sense yeah so what was that age then that you first noticed that you kind of stopped wanting to grow up and wanting everything to kind of slow down I think for me that was in middle school Mm. um because I mean, I know most people, when they talk about how their middle school experience went, they're like, oh, I hated middle school, like, middle school was gross, blah, 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 like, I would never go back to that age, but for me personally, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the future uh, in my life, but as of right now, like, I kind of think my peak was in middle school, 
So, <laughs> That's like, so I, sad. I know. <laughs> but, like, I, like, I really enjoyed my middle school years. So I, I think that was when I started thinking, like, oh, my gosh, like, time is passing by so fast. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Dude, honestly, yeah, I mean, maybe not that early for me. Um, I think for me personally, it was just once I graduated high school and I was going into college, I think that's when it all hit me. Um, and I don't know what it was, honestly, maybe because I feel like my mindset always was um, I always took my age and I compared it to everyone else around me, like in my immediate, in my community. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'm 17 years old. But everyone else, like, you know, my friends that I hang out with, the people I know, you know, most of them are like 18, 19, you know, they're, they're older. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my friends do, but, or, or they were my friends. But anyways, um, yeah, you know, they're, they're older, so I'm chilling, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of young compared to everything. So I don't really have to worry about any, um, about being late to anything, missing out on things because I'm, you know, growing up or anything like that. But honestly, yeah, college comes around, it hits you definitely because... Um, at least for me, that's a whole new set of friends, whole new community, and everyone's just on that same playing field with you, same age, everything. Sometimes it seems like, you know, a lot of times actually, it seems like everyone else is so much more further ahead in life, even if they are, you know, the same age as you and everything, they got internships lined up, you know, they have a plan for the future, they, they study better than you, they get better grades than you, um, they're more talented than you and this and this, and so like, I think all of that just kind of weighing on in on you um on me at once at least you know like um i think that's definitely where it hits um but i mean yeah i mean you know right now are you would you say you're kind of still looking forward to growing up is there like an age that you're kind of looking forward to now or is it just like you know you just want to everything to slow down until one day you realize you're like 50 <laughs> <laughs> um I would say as of right now, I mean, there, I don't have a specific age that I'm looking forward to, um, but I guess if I had to choose something that I was looking forward to in my life, then I would say I can't wait to see where I am in five to ten years um, with my career um, and even like in my personal life like will I have a family of my own or will I be still writing out the singles life like who knows but <laughs> I <choice>. guess <laughs> <By choice. laughs> I guess like if I had to choose something in the future like I'm really looking forward to where I'll, where I'll be but as of right now I think I'm just really happy with my life um, at the moment um, I don't really spend a lot of time now like looking back and see and like regret things or I don't really focus on my time for things that will happen in the future um I really like where I am right now in my life as a 23 year old um and I think even f uh for the rest of this 2020 although this year totally has been crap <laughs> I I know that God still has a lot of things planned for me. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm just living my best life yeah. as it is. Dude, but doesn't it seem like time goes by faster when, as the older you get? Yes. When I was young and, like, our parents or adults would say, oh, yeah, like, once you hit your 20s, then, like, the next thing you know, you're 30, and then, like, it goes by faster mm. each year. I really didn't understand that, but my college years those four years went by super fast like it really mm. went like that like in a blink of an eye um and now i'm already graduated i can no longer tell other people that i'm a student like that's not my occupation anymore <laughs> um and yeah even this year 2020 although i mean i personally haven't really accomplished a lot of things and um, I think for most people in the world, we could say 2020 was a bore. Um, I can't believe it's already almost the end of August. Yeah, honestly. Because this thing all started, let's say, I think like, I think it definitely hit the news like around December maybe or 
Yeah, I think Corona. Yeah, first like was like getting mentioned in December yeah. in like Asian countries, but then in America, we went into quarantine like mid March. So was it that early? Yeah. Mid March. Mid March. Um. So it's been five months. Oh my gosh. And like, I feel like we're not even halfway through this thing anymore. <laughs> you know, I think definitely for us students, I think we still have like another six months to go or something. Um, who knows? Maybe this whole year, um, you know, it's gonna be gone. But yeah, I mean, dude, definitely time. Like, I feel like, like you said, like this four years of college. Um, I feel like I did the most or more things in these four years of college than I did in high school or middle mm-hmm. school. But looking back, like I feel like these four years of college have gone by so much faster than high yes. school and middle school. So, um, and I think like us too, like. Especially in high, we're starting high school, even in middle school, maybe like I feel like we, given our circumstances, um, you know, in family, financially, um, you know, would you say we're kind of accelerated, you know, with growth, you know, because we kind of had to look for jobs uh, mm-hmm. a lot younger, you know, earlier than other best. people, yeah, um, take on responsibilities that, you know, not many others not might not have to take on. So, I mean, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think for us, compared to, you know, the group of friends that we grew up with, um, we did have to grow up in, especially in the terms of, like, finances faster than most of our peers. Um, And when I was young, I really hated the fact that we never got allowances (laughs) because, you know, like, the books that you read, the TV shows that you watch as kids, um, and then even, like, our friends growing up, like, they all got allowances. Like, kids always got allowances. Yeah, some people still get allowances. Yeah, Yeah. some people, like, even, like, my friends who are grown up but have no jobs, (laughs) they get allowances from their parents. Um, But for us, like, we never had that. Um, And, like, that's why we had to find jobs in high school and, you know, start working before any of our friends did and Um, as a kid in high school like I really hated that fact but Mm -hmm. looking back now I'm so thankful that we got to experience that and um, that we um, well first were able to find jobs in high school um, but also like experience that um, I guess the job life (laughs) early on um, because I think those skills that I've acquired then like Mm -hmm. definitely helped me even in college and like now yeah i think i don't know if i ever told you this but i think like definitely i always kind of describe how we grew up as like um kind of you know survival (laughs) you know just survive (laughs) that's like kind of what we uh you know fend for yourself and like um i I think we definitely looked out for each other you know Mm -hmm. um to a certain extent but yeah, I think definitely a lot of things were like, you know, survive, survive, you know, do this, do what you got to do. Um, and I'm sure like, you know, I'm I, I'm sure there's definitely pros and cons. Like you mentioned, like, you know, having that experience the early on, earlier on, getting that work experience. Um, maybe, you know, having, being forced to mature a little quicker, but at the same time, um, becoming that much more responsible and stuff. But at the same time, you know, we, we, we definitely missed out a lot, you, you would say, you know, right? There's definitely cons to the whole thing you know i'm i don't know about you i definitely missed out on uh, a lot of hangouts my friends would have or or you know definitely um this whole thing came with a lot of exhaustion you know a lot of heartache a lot of stress um things like that but yeah i mean i mean would you would you if you were to live it through again would you do the same thing um yes i think as i said I mean, definitely, like, there were times when I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, why do I have to go to work right after school Mm -hmm. and work till close? Like, why do I have to do this when my other friends are, you know, out and about just spending their allowances, Mm -hmm. having fun? Um, But I think, as I said, like, the the skills that I've learned then and the independence that I got from a young age, like, it really shaped me to become who I am and it really helped me. later on in life and i'm sure that'll help me in the future as well um 
so if I ever got a second chance at life or <laughs> if I have like kids my own kids later in the future mm-hmm. I think I'll definitely um go about like a similar route as to like how I grew up teaching them to be independent at an earlier age mm-hmm. and, and you? Yeah, no, I mean uh, yeah I think the same and I think you know I that kind of you know makes me think of a uh, something this wasn't on the agenda of, you know to talk about but I think definitely talking about like you said when, when you have kids how you're gonna raise them up you know um, seeing how we were raised up um, dude I mean you gotta admit you know um, our parents are definitely I think definitely one of the blessings we do did have growing up um, maybe even not even, even if it wasn't financially or, or stuff like that um, or even you know them spending a lot of time as a family but you know they they let us do what we want (laughs) you know for the most part (laughs) yeah Yeah, they let us be independent um i think a lot more than what typical parents would um i think i like even in my sophomore year in high school like i wouldn't even come home for like a couple days at a time because always like sleeping over at friends places like i wouldn't tell my parents until after (laughs) i already did and everything like that and like you know, like, normally that would be unacceptable in, like, a typical, I guess, household. But, you know, our parents definitely let us have, you know, run around for sure. Um, is that, you think that's how you're going to raise your kids? Uh, yes. Yeah? That, like, I would rather much raise my kids, like, the way that our parents raised us versus, like, a parent who kind of like shelters yeah something. shelters or kids or has like curfews and you know is kind of strict on a lot of things yeah. um because i mean i definitely had a lot of fun growing up as you mentioned like we would have sleep like spontaneous sleepovers um or invite people over to our house <laughs> without like letting our parents know in advance um not saying that our parents like didn't care where we were or anything like that uh-huh. but um they yeah they just taught us to be independent like early on and they told us you know like you can do basically whatever you want but also at the same time if that comes with consequences like you kind of have to deal with it Mm -hmm. um and i think that's very important message that like a lot of kids nowadays like don't really get from their parents because a lot of parents (laughs) nowadays well this is a whole different topic but (laughs) they basically like don't grow up like the way that we did Mm. yeah honestly i want to like raise my kids like that too i feel like growing getting older and like just like thinking realistically of me having kids like i understand why these parents like shelter their kids and so like they always want to know where they are like like, I, I think the most bizarre thing to me ever was, like, a lot of my friends, their parents track their phone. Mm-hmm. So, like, they know where you are every time. And, like, if you turn off, um, if my friends turn off their location, in the next, within the next, like, two, three minutes, they get a text from their um, parents, like, why'd you turn off your location? Like, turn it back on and things like that. And, like, like that was so bizarre to me, definitely, because that's, like, you know, that's not how we grew up. But, you know, like, definitely thinking about it, dude. It, I would say so stressed out if like my especially if I had a daughter or something like that my little girl would like you know that she gets to high school or you know that certain age and she's out late like I'm like dang you know like where is she um what is she doing I like I hope she's okay you know definitely just you you get concerned for your kids so um you definitely want to know where they are 24 7 if you can at the same time you know like you said um I think it definitely is very valuable to raise your kid to learn about independence responsibility and yeah like you said consequences as well um i think i think definitely i'm a firm believer in like you know letting people learn through experience Mm -hmm. letting people learn um by going through life themselves and so yeah dang that was off a little off tangent but i think that was definitely you know a good cool thing to talk about something that's been on my mind um having kids (laughs) It's always <laughs> on my mind, but <laughs> no, nah, I gotta take care of the first step first. <laughs> finding someone to have kids with. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyways, yeah. Before this podcast gets a little too long, let's move on to the fu- third and final uh, topic here. And this one's gonna be fairly short, but 
uh, this is something that I kind of wanted to, um, you know, make into something that I um, ask every guest that does come onto this podcast series if, you know, um, we do have the opportunity in the future episodes. Uh, and that is, you know, something that I always kind of um, loved was to hear people's favorite inspirational quotes. And so um, I was hoping to kind of end off every podcast if I um, with the guests to asking them to share their favorite inspirational quotes. So do you have yours? Do you, do you know your favorite inspirational yes. quotes? <laughs> yeah? Okay. I have it pulled up, so All I right. don't mess it up. Um, so my favorite inspirational quote is actually a Bible verse. Um, mm, okay. And it's, it's funny how I found it. I mean, I always knew that this Bible verse existed because, you know, we heard about it at church and um, I've definitely read it when I'm reading through the Bible, but um, my senior year in high school when we were getting ready um, for, you know, the yearbook and stuff, and they asked us to write out, like, what we wanted to put under our senior picture um, in the yearbook. I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I put? And I wanted something that really represents me as a Christian, um, but also something, like, but I didn't want to just put like any random quote unquote like Christian things. Mm. So I was really searching through um, like some of the famous Bible verses and I came across this one and I, at that time, I thought it really fit with my situation perfectly because, you know, as a senior in high school, um, waiting to move on to the next steps in your life, um, this verse really um, gave me hope. So the verse that I really like is from Jeremiah 29, 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Um, And as I said, this really gave me hope when I was a senior in high school. Um, But even reading it now, I think um, it really encourages me that God has the best for me in mind. And again, to bring it back to my, this past year with me graduating and getting a job, like looking back at that summer, um, I can definitely see that everything that happened during that summer from graduating college, from passing all of the license exams to getting a job, None of that was me. None of them um, happened because um, I was smart or, you know, I was that capable of getting a job right away. Um, It was all God and he prepared all of those um, doors for me. And yeah, this Bible verse, I think it doesn't matter what age and time you read it. It really gives you hope whenever you read it wow okay um so usually i end off every if you didn't know already my i end off every podcast with a bible verse or a passage you know um but since your inspirational quote was <laughs> you know your your bible verse too um as we kind of uh you know go out of this and and wrap up this episode a special episode of for the lonely nights uh you know uh let's have you read it one more time and and we'll call it a, a day Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you once again, uh, Faith Kim, <laughs> uh, for joining us for this special episode, uh, first of hopefully many to come. Um, and yeah, you know, say one last goodbye to everyone here that's listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you again once again for joining us for this episode. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic week. And as always, all glory to God.